Latina Life Stories is a course that I designed in the early 90s as a result of a lot of the publications that started to come out in the mid 80s to 90s from Latinas, and most of them were about their life stories. We read testimonial literature, autobiographical writings from Latinas from all around the United States around different themes like migration, genealogy, um, the body, all of the major themes, we, we look at them through these readings. You get to hear a lot of different stories in either poems or actual written stories or narratives. And also um, because I get to kind of reflect on my life and what kind of things have been important for me. So in a way, by voicing this, she's taking responsibility. Like for even women that might read this, you don't have to wait until you're older mm -hmm. to get your body back. You can get it back right now. Getting used to like, the adolescence in the United States, I think, is a historical thing. And then the students start to produce their own stories. So we'll have a few students reading their scripts. I got to sit there, inwardly flinching, as he cataloged his faults and his failures, hanging on to every word as my hero chipped away his pedestal. One day, my Mabelina said she was sending me to the Norte because she had hopes and dreams of a better future for me. One of the things that happens in this class is that it doesn't matter who's in the class, there is always a really high degree of respect in this class that just happens organically because people are telling their own lives. I have a lot of respect for the professor uh, because she really goes out of her way to try and create a, a supportive environment in this class. This making a digital story of their own enables students to actually become authors in their own right. So it isn't just like they're reading and maybe writing an autobiography for class assignment, but rather now they're making something that's permanent. Let's go through it once more without recording. Mm -hmm. And um, try to start with your voice way high, you know, and, and pretend that there's, you're talking to a whole bunch of people on the other side of this booth. Part of the process is that I ask them to read their own stories because the, the idea is that it's your voice that matters most. My first contraction tore through me like a bullet. Without pain intervention, I delivered my son nine hours later. Seeing his glorious little naked body, I, for the first time, loved mine. Every day, I am grateful for a body that can pick up my son kiss him and hold him as he drifts comfortably into sleep. Bravo. And they take that recording and then they start bringing the visuals in and they mix it in iMovie. Storytelling is often so important in bridging the gaps of understanding. I want them to take away an understanding of the complexity of difference. 